right, so now that we have everything set up, it is time to call on our API. So we're going to go back here and we're going to make two new folders, uh, one being actions and the other being reducers. And this is a part of Redux, so we're setting it up as if this was going to be a much bigger application um, using Redux. So new folder, actions, inside of that folder we're going to have index.js and then we're going to make another folder called reducers and inside that folder we will also have another index.js and it's okay that these are all called index.js because uh, they're each in separate folders and it basically is just saying that it's the root of each of those folders. So let's go back to our index.js and actions. Okay, so now we need to import Axios from Axios. So if you remember this is what we downloaded to help us uh, get all of that information from our color API. So now we need to make a function to do this. So we say export function. I'm going to call mine load color. You can call it whatever you'd like. And then we say return dispatch. So think of dispatch. Uh, just like everyday terms that we use dispatch, we're sending off something, right? So we're going to be returning um, what we're sending off. Okay, and so after that we make a fat arrow function because in this tutorial we're using ES6. Oh. Okay, and then we say return Axios. Why is this yelling at me? Oh, that's why. My bad. All right, there we go. All right, so now it won't be yelling at us anymore. Return Axios dot get. Okay, so we're going to be returning what we are going to be getting. So just think of this next step is kind of like dialing in a phone number and then um, we're specifically going to be getting someone very specific on the other line. And to do this, we use this a little URL which specifically gets us a random color every single time that we make a phone call right and if we wanted something even more specific uh, we will tell it to do so all right so we just paste that in there and then we say dot then and then there's two parentheses there response another fat arrow function and inside of here we're going to say dispatch again and then um, so this is going to be dispatching another function so um, we haven't made that function yet but I am going to call mine change color Okay, so in here we need to tell it what to return. Okay, so specifically, if we just want to return everything in here, we say just response.data. So what response.data is, is everything that this is calling for. So it is, response.data is literally this entire thing which is a lot of information, right? I don't need all of that information. For this specific function, all I am looking for is the color, right? So there are a couple of places in this API in which you can get the color. You can get it here in colors uh, in this big array here. And then in the first position, uh, we have an object and we have the hex color. We also have it in another place. Da, da, da. Where are you at? Okay, there it is. It's a new color. It's the exact same, so I'm not really quite sure why they set it up that way. But new color is just a little less typing to get to than hex, but it's right there. So we just say, so to get to that point, since this is not inside 
of anything else, we just say dot new color, right? But there's another trick here that we're not quite seeing. So to get um, it to actually read as a color, as a hex color, as such as this is, if we were to be writing this in, a, in any other situation, we would need um, a hashtag or a pound sign. Uh, but in this API, it doesn't actually provide it. So we have to actually put it in there. So it knows every time. There we go. So every time it's going to be returning that. Okay, all right, so now we need to write um, our return um, function here, which is change color. Okay, and so we say export function change color. And it's going to take, uh, we're going to give it color as an argument. So basically it needs this, right, to work. It actually needs something inside of there to work. Let me say return type, and then I'm just going to tell it change color. And then color equals color. Okay, so what this is useful for, it's going to help in our reducers. Um, for our reducers to know exactly which one of these functions it's talking about. Um, we could have a huge long list of uh, export functions, so this just kind of helps deviate um, from each other. Okay, cool, so now that we have all of our actions set up, let's head on down to our reducers and let's get this set up. So let's go ahead and set up our default state. So let default state equals all right, so color, so I think for the default color, I'm just gonna have it as red. Um, and so uh, eventually we'll need to go back into our CSS and get rid of that white um, color that is hard coded in there because we don't want that. We want this to be fun and dynamic. So we do that and then we make something called our main reducer. So we say const because we never want this to change. Uh, main reducer equals state equals default state comma action. Okay, and then we make a fat arrow function and we say if action dot type equals 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 change color then we are going to say return dot 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 state so this is unpacking state action dot color oops okay, color has to equal action dot color okay, I'm getting a little sloppy in my typing there we go okay all right cool and else if this isn't the case we're going to return dot 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 state Okay, so at the very end of this, we say export default main reducer. All right, so now in the next video, we are going to connect all of these things together so that we can pass down all of the information that we're getting from our actions all the way down into our component.